A while back I did a blog series that uh, kind of got ended up getting bogged down in intermission um, about the, the game Ghost Stories. Uh, in the game, I in my particular copy, I'll, I guess I'll just open up right now, I have a Dao Te Ching, um, <laughs> a book which I haven't really read. Um, I read parts of it, however, because um, for the blog series and other times when I play ghost stories, I'll occasionally look up a passage in the Tao Te Ching because the um, monks in the game are Taoist monks. So to kind of uh, learn a, a little bit of a particular philosophy as I'm playing, I, I, I think that's a, a great way to learn is through games. Um, but the point of that is one of the things the Tao Te Ching talks about is how um, if you have uh, something good or something that you qualify as good happen to you, there also has to be a bad. Um, partially because if you define some things as good, you have to define other things as bad. And that's sort of what's happened um, in our game, Origins, How We Became Human. So let's take a look at the board. A lot has happened um, in the game since last time it was our turn. Uh, so first big thing is the Hobbit Lord finally went into chaos. I say finally because his population uh, track was looking pretty bad and he has no government, or he had no government. Um, so what that did was that, that allowed uh, USR Local to make a huge comeback. More on him later. Um, on the other side of the map, I'm just going in turn order here. Uh, Wolf Corbett, he finally is, well, I think last time he started to get some stuff, but now he's starting to expand. Um, so if you can see, he's down here by Birchall Zebra, and he's right here in the Wheat Pea Olive um, Hex. Now Wolf, uh, just from communicating with him, seems to, he has a certain He's very methodical, I think, with this game, and I think that's not a bad thing. I think it's definitely, it's, it's going to work out well for him. He's held back, um, and I, you, I, I recommend actually looking at the forum for Wolf's Post, because he, he talks a lot about his thinking in terms of uh, what he decides to do, but he's held back on advancing, kind of like we have, um, but he has more for a, a specific purpose, um, and that is that he likes to do certain things before he moves forward. So here we see he's on virtual zebra hex and he's on the wheat pea olive hex, okay? So I can tell you what he's gonna do and I'm, I'm fairly confident about this. He's gonna use a couple turns. I think next turn he's gonna try and domesticate either the wheat pea olive or the virtual zebra. I'm gonna guess the wheat pea olive just because of the geopolitical, or no, I'm gonna guess virtual zebra just because of the geopolitical situation. So that'll, that'll bump up his metallurgy. The wheat pea olive he's going to do to get um, his footprint up. So that's what I think he's going to do. I wonder if people have a similar insight into our decision making process because we are also very open about that. Um, possessive man Jonathan Bolton, he's, he's coming back again. His demography still not looking that good but he's getting it back in part because the daubed granaries are back in play. They've made the rounds. Um, I think I don't know that the Hobbit Lord got to use it, but um, both the Possessive Man and USR Local have. Okay, so then USR Local's back on the board. He has made a deal. It's called the, what are demographies? The PN... HPN Detente? I got yeah. HPN Detente? Entente? Yeah, Entente. So they have a, there's a treaty between um, the Hobbit Lord, the possessive man Jonathan Bolton, and USR local, um, and they've kind of they've essentially divvied up this part of the world. So while that's not an alliance per se, it's definitely kind of troublesome when over half of the other players have reached an agreement and you're not part of it. Um, I don't like. I think the name of their um, entente is maybe a little mathy. I, it's not really mathy, but it doesn't have the kind of spirit that, that we would we'd like to encourage as a barbarian because that's what we are to them. I mean, they're all the Era 2 guys and the Era 1 guys are left out partially because of the rules of the game. Um, but So they have that entente. We'll call it the stuffy nose face and taunt, because they're all stuffy with their fully developed brains looking down on us barbarians. Um, 
Not that we're bitter. So now we're, it's our turn. That's the whole global situation. What do we have going for us? We're kind of we're kind of in the hinterlands all over the place. There we are over there. There we are over there. There's giraffe kind of in the middle. Wolf's got us got her surrounded. Um, I think you know he's just going for virtual zebra and the wheat pea olive. We're kind of lost our homeland here, um, and we have to do innovation action. So ransack is probably the best thing to do. I think. This guy's probably been expended, I forget. I'll have to look on that. Uh, I'll be right back. So Little Red is expended. Now we have a couple interesting options here looking out on the board. So we could get an Elder and encephalize our, um, our, uh, our Wernix area here. We could certainly do that. Um, that would give us another Elder. And it would bring us into Era 2. Are we ready to go into Era 2? What do we have going for us? We have the energy and the footprint, um, which is at, at par with everyone else in Era 2. One thing we are missing out on, um, which Wolf is going to be going for, is going up to footprint 3. Uh, the world's getting kind of populated, so heavily populated, so that would be very useful to do first. Where could we do that? Uh, in the new world here with maize beans. Um, cowboy could go down there and become a farmer rather than a rancher. So that's one intriguing option uh, to go into Era 2. We would be missing out on getting Footprint 3, but then we'd be able to talk to people and we wouldn't be left out of the stuffy nose face club. Um, another uh, promising card and this is kind of a, a, a interesting kind of a long-term thing is we could take this in preparation for getting the maize beans. Um, if we got the maize beans we could get up to footprint three. Taking this would bring us immediately up to footprint four um, which would be quite nice. Then we have this um, very kind of short-term card actually uh, but would also have some long-term benefits. We have the dobbled granaries, dobbed. I always want to say dobbled. They're dobbed with the holophthaloi and the female figurines. What that would do is give us the double fecundity decrease, which is so much fun to say to, with an exclamation point. Double fecundity decrease. Um, that would give us two innovation actions, and we wouldn't have to worry about chaos. When you have a game set up for a long time, you get a lot of dust and hair, especially when you're growing old. Um, so that's a big choice. We're going to have to talk to our people about that. I actually brought them out there, so I have to go beyond that curtain to bring them back. I'm sorry, before I deliberate, I want to talk about one final option. It doesn't involve ransacking cards. I know I think about ransacking cards a lot. A lot right now, especially because we have the ritual face up again. Having that eye lets us take these Era 2 cards, which we're normally barred from, because we're not part of the Stuffy Nose Face Club. Um, so the, the final option would be to um, use Storyteller, which is just an innovation action to reset um, Little Red there. That's not too compelling of an option, but that would be a way that we could we could prepare for Cowboy to get these maize beans. Yay! The first one to likely speak among our group would be Flush. Um, he's an opinionated swine by his own admission. Um, however, he is conflicted in this case, and let's go over why that is. So first of all, he would really like to be included in the Stuffy Nose Club. He feels left out, um, and his geographical position kind of reflects that too. Here he is just kind of standing alone in um, Eastern Asia, just kind of outside everyone, not able to speak yet because of um, our stuffed up Wernix area, or I guess our because of the way the cubes work, I always think of things being stuffed up, but really it's just not developed yet. Um, so here he is kind of on the outside looking in at the cool kids party, um, which is not how I feel at all. The, the, I, 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 kinda, the, I have to stop here because I'm speaking in somewhat of a negative ter tone about these people, but that's not actually how I feel. Um, it's just it's more fun that way to, to talk this way. Um, and I think Flush might actually feel that way, too. So that that said, he would like to be a part of them, so he would, you know, part of him is saying to, to do this move, um, to get into Era 2, get the Elder. Um, on the other hand, he would also like to beat them. Um, because that would, you know, 
he feels a little slighted, and so if he could beat them somehow, then he would feel like vindicated and uh, the sort of a vengefulness develops when one is left out. Um, so in that case, you know, he would kind of like to get this one going, uh, to kind of you know shazam them in the in the end, you know, maybe maybe have a bad a rough turn, but then come back. But then on the other hand, he would love to get the double fecundity decrease because he knows that if there is a loss of population due to chaos, he would probably have to be the one to go. He has a very, you know, a very poor claim to being the one to stay when he's there. Cowboy's here in the New World, which is which is nice because no one's going to mess with him there. And then giraffes are one metropolis. So He's kind of in a, a place where he has a hard time coming up with solutions. So let's talk to someone else. Little Red is an intelligent man, but he's not one for wasting a lot of time thinking. His motto is do it now, and he would like to just move forward in the game. Um, he's, he's strongly behind this move right now. And so I think we're going to put his vote there. I, you know, I don't really have um, a particular government in mind for these people. Um, I kind of started out with, you know, the elders would, would have a heavier hand in the innovation. Um, right now I think it's a small enough group that they don't really need a government and they just can kind of talk it out. Since most of these people presumably are from the United States, um, people in the, the United States of America tend to um, go with voting on things because we fancy ourselves a democracy even though we are a republic. So we'll go with his vote being there, um, with the caveat that he is, he is the priestess of the people. So there is, um, there is something to be said for that. Uh, as the priestess, however, he would like to get you, make use of the ritual. So he's not, not against hearing, I, hearing other ideas such as Giraffe's idea, she would really like to use the double fecundity decrease. She is um, worried about going into chaos. She doesn't think that would be very good for us. Um, and since, you know, as a former priestess, she, uh, she knows the importance of the ritual. And she would like to make use of it while we can. Um, of course, under his plan, if this Dob Granaries, which is, is, still, um, is still available, we would be able to get it next turn. But she she would like to take the more careful route. Um, so I think we can say with confidence that Giraffe is going to take a vote here. Before I go on, I just want to say that this is all a process for me. I have no idea what the choice is going to be. Um, I will say that just as I was kind of following the form earlier today, I thought we would take the Dob Granaries for sure. I hadn't even considered certain other options that are coming to light now. So um, I, I, I'm not... I'm not like a, a detective who's figured out the crime that's kind of going over it with you. Um, I'm actually, right now, uh, trying to figure it out. Yeah. Just in case you're wondering. While Cowboy's thinking about it, Flush has something in mind that he would like to present. Um, I should actually have just gotten it. Whoops, sorry. Sorry, USR. Sorry, Jonathan. Um, I should have got another stand out. Flush would like to take the daubed granaries, but he doesn't want to use it yet. He wants to risk the um, he wants to risk the chaos in order to do something else. So that's his position. So that's slightly different than giraffes, because giraffe would like to take the daubed granaries and use it right away. Um, she can see keeping the ritual, though. So, I think, I think we're seeing here the people in discussion with the priestess, um, who would like to move forward. They're going to talk it out. Before I go into how the turn came out, I thought I'd just check in on um, our space crew. They are currently on shore leave, or planet leave, I guess. They're on vacation. Wow, here they are, actually, right here. They're not really on vacation, but um, uh, we'll put them. We'll put them up here by this hat. They're on. No, no, in the blinds. They're on vacation um, while we wait to see if we're going to do the bot wars or not. 
Um, and in the meantime, Cat and as in Cat, I let her have a little um, little dinner party or cocktail party, I guess. Um, she had some friends over. I made the rule that for her, you know, she, that she had to choose real people from um, other piles. Um, so I, I, when I'm not playing with them, I keep them in piles uh, based on where they are in the tournament. Um, so here she is. She started this game of Mega Corpse, um, or as we like to call it, Mega Core. And it was just kind of fun. I, I let her pick who would come. Um, she had to choose between Roadrunner or Lefty, the blue baby. She chose Roadrunner. Chose Brezza over Hubba. Chose um, Fat Matt among all the semi-finalists. She chose DJ Double J, who I always thought would be a lot of fun um, at a party. So chose her. She chose Cobweb, because Cobweb's also in marketing, so they would have some things to talk about. So they have their, their little companies, and they've, um, they're mega corporations, and they've gotten their companies, and they're just having generally a good time. Okay, not too far into the game yet, but. So you know what, what's going on over here? These people haven't been idle. I guess they've kind of been idle hanging around in blinds. So back over here, um, here is here's Flush's plan and he got enough, after he explained it, he got enough support from the others including um, Little Red to, to enact it. So we, we um, ransacked this with our innovation action Thankfully, got our chaos roll, um, which we had a you know a decent chance, one in six chance we would have failed. He he to get people to agree to it, he volunteered to be the one to go, um, which he kind of figured he would have to be anyway. Um, kind of part of him would like to go in outer space, but he wants to be a part of this game, uh, so he volunteered to to make this happen. Then he traveled through the the tundra here, one two three four five bonked this cube, which is unfortunate, in order that we might Sabine raid this card. So he was able to get a couple of the options in one play there. 